Hi and welcome to Let Spirit Lead. I'm Cecil Williams and in this interview you'll meet the wonderful Amor Stassin who will share with us her amazing story when she got the catalytic call from the witches and how it completely changed her life. Amor is a storyteller, poet, writer, self-development trainer, soul-based coach and nature lover and she helps you awaken the indigenous spirit of the Celtic land within you and the ancient witch that lives inside your bones. So let's head over to this interview now. Thank you, Amor, for being here with us today. It's awesome to have you on our podcast. I'm so happy to be here and honored to be asked. So thank you. Well, thank you. Our topic today is all about witches and that ancient power within us. So would you mind sharing with us, please, how your journey in answering their call began? Mm, yeah, it wasn't so long ago. It was only last August. And I know, yeah, I know the specific date. Last August, when I consciously became aware of the witches and how they would guide me in my life, in my career, in my work. So we had gone on a tour with my family to the Edinburgh Dungeons. I live in Scotland. And it was actually on the Lion's Gate on the 8th of August last year, 2020. I didn't actually want to go on the tour because it was a gorgeous sunny day. You don't get a lot of them in Scotland. It was a no, gorgeous sunny day. I wanted to be outside in the summer sunshine with my family. But no, we were going into the Edinburgh Dungeons. So for anyone who hasn't experienced this kind of tour, it's very real. They bring the story, they bring history to life. And part of the tour was going into one of the rooms where they were asked for a volunteer to role play a mock witch trial. And me being me volunteered and stepped forth to be on trial as a witch, accused of witchcraft. And I was also being asked by the judge to um, testify on behalf of one of my witch sisters. And it was just so amazing and so unexpected because what I describe it as is what rose within me was this flame, a flame of remembrance. And it was so soft and gentle at first that if I hadn't been conscious or listening, I would have just dismissed it. And this whole, you know, the rest of the journey wouldn't have happened, basically. But something prodded me, something, the witches, of course, prodded me to pay attention. And it just ignited this remembrance within me of who are these witches and um, what is their story? And also, for me, it was like a drawing of the line, like, no, I am not going to testify on behalf of my sisters anymore. And no, this is not going to happen by the judge. He is not going to sentence me to death for witchcraft this time round in my life. So it was really, it was so unexpected and bizarre and powerful mm. <laughs> that it really it took my breath away and continues to, to be honest. I can actually feel it when you're talking about it. So would you mind sharing, because I've experienced this when, and it really does uh, bypasses any conscious understanding, but when you feel, when you feel their energy rise within your bones. You feel them coming. It's like they're, it's like they're coming back to life within you. They're starting to inform you. How did you experience that? That's exactly what it was like. And for me, it, it, it was that soft flame, flame initially. And then it was like this volcanic surge. Mm -hmm. So I'm Sagittarius anyway. I've got a lot of fire. No, I am, why? Are you? Yes. When are you? In the summer? 12, 12, 12. Yes. Oh, 12. Yeah, I'm 17. Oh, wow. how cool. We're both That's... Sagittarius. Yeah. <gasps> Witches like Sagittarians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not excluding anyone else watching this, though. You're all welcome. <laughs> you know, and there's plenty of fire in me. I have a lot yeah. of planets in Sagittarius. So perhaps this is their way of me beginning to listen. So I describe it as a volcanic surge within me. And later on that day, because my curiosity had been piqued, I went to seek out this Witches Well Memorial. That is a small, humble memorial that has been erected on the Edinburgh Castle Esplanade 
for the 300 witches that were executed specifically on that spot on Edinburgh Castle. And it was there that they began to speak even louder through me. So Edinburgh Castle sits in a, an extinct volcano. So the energy and the, the power is there already mm. in the earth. It rumbles beneath your feet. And wow. as I stood and took photos at the Witches Well Memorial, it was really this ferociousness. Of like, this is so unfair. It was like this grief that had been suppressed within me, this rage that had been dormant for millennia. And how it flowed through me was actually through words and mantra which was the witches awakening this within me and poetry and creativity. So this, as I turned from the witches well and began to walk home, this mantra rose up and it was witches rise up, return to your power. And you've heard this before. Yeah. Witches rise up now is the hour. Witches rise up and step on to your throne. Witches rise up. It's time to come home. Yeah, yes. just like that. Yeah. Wow. So that, that's really, and that has been my, the mantra, the guiding force since that moment. And the story just, be, you know, continued to unfold and unfold from there. Wow. 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 Okay. I'm, st I'm still shivering from that, actually. That's as just so awesome and powerful. Yes. So as you then went home, with this now rumbling within you then obviously your creativity kicked in because that's around that after that that you contacted me for your summit and you know I get I get a lot of requests and many many I turned down but there was something with your email that just spoke to me and and then I remember checking the stuff out that you've written. It was so professional, but it was something that spoke to me. Obviously, now we know it was the witches <laughs> that spoke to me. And what's been so amazing with how you created these summits is that you started from scratch and you were actually very, very successful really, really quickly. And I, I've been running a magazine for a long time and we've been doing some summits and stuff. So I know the work involved. <laughs> yes. And that... So you would have answered that call to be creative and to, to let them rise through you and through others and creating these kind of online sacred fires around that. And we can see that. But I want to also know, how did it transform for you? Yeah. What was the healing awesome. and the unearthing and all of that yeah. that you then was sitting with on your own with that yeah oh that's such a powerful question and it really gets to the root of I feel what the the witch's mission was for me if there was a mission for my soul path really that mm. really deep dive into my soul path and um, because even before the the summit sync there were so many synchronicities in the story I was teaching uh a class around um, exploring the Celtic medicine wheel. And we were focusing on the Kalyach witch, who I know you are familiar with as well. I love her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I feel what the witches were awakening within me. And I wrote, you know, poetry just burst forth, like with this, you know, with a ferocity that I really hadn't experienced in a long, ever, I think, in my life. And um, one of the main aspects was around voice so there were three aspects that come to mind around how this how this flowed through me and helped me heal on my path because I feel I had already been on the entrepreneurial path since 2017 so I had already stepped out of my corporate career so that was one part and I was always already I guess open and ready perhaps ready for this but one aspect was voice mm. so connecting to my voice and facetiously, I really thought, well, I've, I'm a trained trainer. I'm used to speaking in front of people, you know, in this kind of voice and, and sharing my voice. So I thought, but once I started sharing my true voice, my poetry, storytelling and my poetry, I say this poetry that's channeled through me. Mm. Once I started speaking that, the writing of it was fine, but the speaking of it 
live sometimes or recording. That's when I noticed this tightness in my throat that I had never noticed before. And I felt the witches were helping to guide me towards this healing that I needed to do to speak more, to share more, and also bring um, gentleness and nurturing to my throat, to my true voice. And again, it was another unexpected aspect of the story because I mm. thought, yeah, I was fine to, to speak, but that was a big part. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you've been taken on a journey where you are healing deeper and deeper layers of the wounding that caused us to be silenced, to be, you know, silenced, killed, suppressed bound all of that so then as you are unearthing that and you're stepping forth with it those old wounds not just in you but also in your sisters and in the collective will have an opportunity it's like an an, an exit point in a way to start to be released through you yeah 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 and the really interesting aspect was that it came out through the, the summit last year, which I called Healing the Witch Wound. So mm. it was so ironic that as I was running this live opening event, I could feel my throat and inside of me, I am cursing, I am swearing, I am questioning my sanity. Why am I doing this? You know, feeling like I just want to pretend there's a tech issue and switch it all off. You know, I just mm. wanted to run and hide. Mm. And actually, what I received was so much support from sisterhood, brotherhood, witches mm -hmm. around the world who were so grateful by the, the rawness, the authenticity, the truth. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what I feel we're, we're craving for this, this really truth. And we've got to connect with that ourselves first, which is what my journey continues to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. So... As you have dived deeper into connecting with your truth, connecting with your roots, what has been your biggest insights, your biggest transformation and healing in that, apart from obviously with your voice, but what else? Yeah, I think even before the, the voice, it, it was, I was already on a journey of reconnecting with my roots, my Irish roots, indigenous Celtic roots. I had already been exploring that more on a surface level. So a huge part of the gift of the connection with the witches has been that call home. And for me, that call home is home to my ancient roots. So as you were asking the question, I was the image of turf, like the peat bog, the peat bogs of Ireland, of which there are many came to mind because it really has been a deep dive into this gorgeous, rich, nourishing, ancient turf, which is our ancestors, our tree ancestors that has um, composted over, over millennia. So a big part has been connecting with my ancestors in my family line, um, with my native voice, with the Irish language, the storytelling, the mythology, mm. and rewriting that. Noticing where it doesn't feel right for me to share this story in this way and rewriting that as well for these times. Beautiful, beautiful. So you're starting to weave it from the past, but instead of just kind of bringing that with you, you are finding the medicine from that and then reweaving it so that it can become a medicine for now. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. And the healing, you know, across the, the family lineage as well, that comes with that. And it also gives me that a really a deeper foundation to believe in myself more, mm. Mm. really, and to trust that truth that wants to flow through me, specifically through me, uniquely I mean uniquely because it flows through everyone I believe when we mm -hmm. when we allow it but to allow that to flow through me from this very grounded supported place that yeah. I am part of this lineage and I am here to help heal my family line and the ripple effect for the collective too so it feels very very 
deep yeah and supported yeah and very needed uh, at this time in our in our world yeah so which of them because I, we tend to work with them i feel at different stages anyway but there tends to be some perhaps that are more with us than others for a longer time so i work a lot with the dark divine feminine but obviously i work with the other with the other archetypes as well but which ones are you working with the most which ones are teaching you the most at the moment i love that definitely the kalia witch yes <laughs> it's so awesome uh, yeah yeah and, you know, I find myself sometimes going, OK, I've, I've, you know, that's enough witch stuff for now. I want to return to normal life. You know? But then the Kalyak comes in again. And, um, you know, her flavor and essence for me is she's described as the creator of the Celtic lands. And she mm. cast her rock babies around and, you know, created the landscape. And, you know, it's her fierceness that I that I love. It's like she helps strip away all the lies or all these limiting beliefs that we may tell ourselves. And just to go with this truth that, that lies within us, you know, the real ancient primordial truth that wants to be expressed. Mm. And her place is in Loch Crew, in a sacred site in Ireland. And there's actually a throne, a stone throne that's over 5,000 years old. You may have been there. No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. But that's the one you take us to in your meditation with how because I did your meditation when you introduced us to the kayak the first time and it was awesome. I remember I emailed you straight away and went, I just had this amazing mystical experience in my bedroom with a kayak. And she just came in and she reminds me very much of the giantesses that we have in the Norse tradition. Mm -hmm. She feels very much actually like a sister goddess to both Skadi, uh, which is our, uh, our kind of winter goddess, but also a bit of Hiel, which is our dark goddess. And it's like that sheer power. And I remember I was, she was showing me how I was stuck in this spider's web of stuff. And then she just came in and she just blew it all away. <laughs> and it was like all the thought structures. And I was having like massive extractions within me. I was vomiting it all out. I mean, I was, she was powerful, powerful. It was like she just came with that wind and just, and then she just picked me up and, and then all of it just collapsed around me. It was, I mean, awesome, which is why when I have her now in my meditations, often I have the wind come in <laughs> because that was my experience with her the first time, just blowing all those cobwebs away but not just cobwebs I mean thick heavy strands of illusions of thought patterns of programming that you've been trapped in and she will just wah, obliterate it yeah, yeah she's so efficient it is very efficient <laughs> there's no messing about with her it's like woof. A bit like the Irish, really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what I love as well is that she brings this, it's like this flavor, this edge to, yeah. to the words that, that I choose to write or, you know, this, this edge that, that does cut through the crap. Basically. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel very connected to her. And also Bridget mm. is, is another one as the, the triple yeah. goddess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, there's something about her that I'm, um, she is the guardian of the thresholds and the bridge between mm. this world and, and the other world. And I do feel she is the bridge between where we are now and where we are being guided to go mm. in creating this, this new world. But also the flame links back to another part of the story with the witches, because Bridget's the keeper of the sacred flame. Mm. And the next part of the story of the witches was when I returned to Edinburgh for the first time in May of this year because of lockdown and everything. I didn't go back in. It's only a 20 minute train journey from my house. But I saw these words torch graffitied on a bin just near the castle Esplanade. And I thought I heard these words torch, torch her, torture. Yeah. And then realized, oh, gosh, this is the next part of the story. Yeah. I cannot file witch away under W. It's got to be to be continued and that we are 
the torch bearers, we hold the torch for them, all of those who were persecuted, the named, the unnamed, and for those who feel they cannot speak now in this time as well. We hold the torch and we are the torch. Mm. And Bridget, I feel, helps me connect even deeper with that as an, another ancient goddess of, of Ireland. Yeah, beautiful. It's so sweet, actually, because, again, I see Freya very much as a sister to Bridget, because mm. uh, they're both, you know, sun goddesses, bringers of life. And I see one with, like, golden hair and one with red, flamey hair. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it's... Um, because obviously in our, at that archetypal level, they are all working together. It's their archetypes of similar medicines and similar qualities and just being shared yeah. in slightly different dialects. But I love seeing the connections. I love that. Yeah. Uh, and I love that you have this gorgeous overview as well of, of knowing these ancient mythologies and ancient ways. Yeah, well, I, I meet them in there when I journey in and I go, oh, this is cool. This is cool. You're working together. Wow. Because that's how I recognized that the kayak was similar to Skadi. Because when I saw her, I went, you, you look familiar. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we're kind of sisters of, of the mountains. It's like, yeah, that makes so much sense. It's a very similar uh, energy that they bring. So, yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. And the, the other aspect that... I know you talk about um, the tree of life and mm. bring that into your work. And that's been like the next layer of the connection for me, connecting my indigenous roots with my power as the trunk of the tree and what that is with then voice. And for me, it's kind of like the voice, the branches, you know, the connection to the, the cosmos as well as the earth. Mm. And it's like this gorgeous cycle that continues and deepens. So I feel like I am the tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you got such a beautiful way of describing it. I love it. I love it. Now, I wonder, would you mind reading some poetry for us? Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that would be delicious. I could read the Kalyach poem. Yeah. If that would be good for people. I'm sure it would be. You don't have a choice. No, you do have a choice, of course. <laughs> Not with her, you don't. It's the illusion of choice. <laughs> There's always a choice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be lovely. I can call it up here. So the Kalyak poem is the one that I wrote straight after the encounter, really, with, well, it was one of the poems that emerged from the witchy experience, as I call it, last year. So, um, yeah, I'll just read this and just invite you to relax and sink in to where you are just now, feeling your feet connected, your soles to soil beneath you. And this poem is called The Kalyach Witches Rise Up, said in her fierce voice. I am the ancient and mighty Kalyach, creator of the Celtic lands, where I've traveled so far and wide. I am as strong as any warrior. I am fierce as the gale force winds as they blow in from wild Atlantic oceans. A force to be reckoned with, rock solid, they say. I am the goddess of winter, shrouding you in brilliant blankets of white snows. My Arctic perspectives will give you chills as you stand frozen to your spot. I filled my apron with rocks and boulders and in great big leaps and hops between Scotland and Ireland, I scattered these rocks to form the mountains of Schlieve Gillian and Ulster, the cairns of Loch Crewe and Meath, the Bera Peninsula in Kerry, rock babies birthed from my divine womb. I am the wind that tossles your hair. I am air. And I am here today to walk with you into the unknown. You're not yet lived. To help you feel, to heal your witch woundings, conscious or unconscious. In this life, over many lifetimes, let me tell you first of some of my witchy experiences. 
Names, names they did call me. Old hag, witch, crone, wailing banshee, bone mother. I am all of these and so much more, despite the distortion of the lore. I am the sacred air that breeds you, the land that births you. I speak to you in the hills and valleys. I taunt you in the mountains and rocks. I am rooted in the landscape of your own becoming. I am your mother, dear child. I hear your battle cries, your worries and your lies. And I am here to lay out the truth of a power that cannot be rebuked, but emerges to this day from underground cliffs and rocks and the very landscape that is you. They tried to shut me up, silencing me with unfair trial, the tribulations I have been through, tied to a wooden pole, burnt at the stake accused of witchcraft, the winter winds fanning the flames as they watched on men, women, children, the very landscape of my own creation, embedding trauma for centuries to come, over many lifetimes betrayed, severed from my soul. And now I've returned to my throne upon the old hag's chair, that magical rock looking out to the hill of Tara and Ishnach. So I call on you today to be fierce. I call on you to strip away your lies. I call on you to return to your innate power. Witches, rise up, return to your power. Witches, rise up, now is the hour. Witches, rise up, step on to your throne. Witches, rise up, it is time to come home. Thank you. Wow. I'm actually quite, quite taken back by that. That is awesome. <sighs> yeah. You can feel it, can't you? You really can feel it rising, yeah. rising, rising in our bones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I just invite people, you and people to, yeah, just take a moment here and feel that. Feel the resonance of her words. Mm. And what she is calling forth through you for these times. It's like an awakening from a long slumber. And as we awaken, what it feels like for me is like as we awaken, we also awaken the, it's like feeling and witnessing also the grief that caused us to fall asleep in the first place. So it's like doing this hovering at the beginning <laughs> where we go, oh, it nearly catches your breath. <laughs> And then you just have to whew, let it continue to rise, 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 moving through that old, old, it's like a scream of, it's like a scream. And then it's like, no, we're here, <laughs> we're back, we're back, we're back. And I interviewed Heather Otomara and she said, well, they could kill us, but we just keep coming back. <laughs> I love that. It's like, we're back. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I'm so glad I asked you to read that. It's, it's awesome. And it's been, I didn't realize it was so recent for you because you have embodied it so fully. It's like you've obviously just stepped into what you already knew in another lifetime. And now you're just reawakening and remembering and embodying that and then time you know it's time is irrelevant <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that, it's really just feels... embodying it that is the relevance in it yeah yeah it does really feel that and you know the irony is that for my last job in Edinburgh looked out my last corporate job in Edinburgh looked out to the castle to Edinburgh castle 
Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was another one of these loops in the spiral of the story that I believe it was the witches calling yeah. me out all along. Yeah. You know, planning yeah. it in, in a few years time, there'll be this experience. And yeah, and, it, you know, like you share with the, your experience of the Kalyak, of her blowing away the cobwebs, like it, it feels like that's, that's what it was like for me as, as like the volcanic surge for all this creativity, which was already within me, could have a, a way of expressing itself. Mm. Mm. But it's also your honouring of that. You recognising the sacredness of this, because the mind could so easily kick in and go, mm, it's not the right time. And what will people say? And, you know, you don't have the knowledge of that and you don't. You know that what the mind can can do. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and so you had all of that, and you still honored that sacred path. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's that's so important that for, for that we recognize this that just because you have an awakening and you have these mystical experiences and you recognize you have a sacred path doesn't mean it's easy. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're not going to have this doubt and screams within you go or your body shaking with fear or you suddenly develop a fever or whatever it is or a sore throat or whatever it is yeah. all these different ways of stopping you stopping you stopping you and you still have to just go no I am answering this call now yeah yes absolutely and it is it is walking with or dancing with the fear as well mm. because yes it is it is scary and it's you know I was even experiencing that today actually of like wow here's more layers of the scariness mm. of of walking this path and I was able to notice it and just to give it some space mm. as opposed to my old pattern of pushing it down pushing it away um, pretending it's not there and just by giving it that space it didn't make it go away straight away, but it was like giving this voice to this part of me. Mm. Um, and yeah, I feel that's what the witchy experience, as I call it, has helped me do because I knew I had to and I knew it wasn't about me. I might look stupid or silly or who am I to talk about the witches? I don't know. <laughs> I knew I had to. And that by talking about it, the people would come. And they do and continue to. And the mm. connections that we're making around the world, because this witch energy, this energy is rising globally. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They may call it different things. In some circles it might be called, you know, the wise woman energy rising. Others is the divine feminine. Others is the witches. Others is the priestesses. It really doesn't matter. It's the same energy. <laughs> it's that that is actually our birthright. Mm. That is actually our power, that the, the power of the feminine, she's rising again. And it's so needed. We can see that when we look out in the world that, you know, it, we can't just pretend it's okay anymore. It's literally the world is dying. So at some point, I think we within ourselves, just like when you're a mother, if your children are threatened, you go, Wah! you just roar, even if you normally would go, you know, I want to be nice and liked or whatever. It's like, Wah! don't you dare. And it's kind of that feeling now that it's like, it is time for her to rise through us. We've had enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I love that, you know, my, I have three children and you know, one of my children in particular is um, really resonates with the witch archetype. And she had her friends around a few months ago and was like, Mom, um, one of my friends wants to talk to you about witches because she's a witch. Oh. <laughs> I just thought it was so gorgeous, you know, 13 year olds just knowing that they are this and they're so wise and, and uninhibited, unfazed by, by it. Yeah, oh, it's, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Wow, amazing. Is there anything else you'd like to share today? I think what I'd like to share is um, for people to trust in those flickers and flames of 
remembrance or intuition or visions in whatever way they come to you and to trust that that is your truth mm. and if your message is then to share that or take action in some way to to trust that and know that the support is there seen and unseen you know from many realms mm. Yeah, because we, we really are being called um, to, you know, I wrote a poem the other day to flood the world with our voices mm. and to speak from that place, mm. not to cause harm or damage, but like as in a good flood that we can override the systems and paradigms that are here with this beautiful, dark, feminine wisdom that is yes. so needed and is rebirthing again yeah. to bring our world back to, to balanced wholeness. Yeah, and isn't it also so awesome that now, thanks to 2020, everyone knows how to work Zoom and be online. And it's like before people were like, now some people always had already started to do it. Now everyone knows how to use it. So you can reach each other so quickly like we're doing today I mean that it's like Barbara Marks Hubbard used to call the media like the internet it's the nervous system so when we flood media and the internet with all this goodness all this wisdom all this as you say the dark divine feminine all her beautiful gold and healing light mm -hmm. Whew it will ripple out really quickly. So we can use the internet for good. Yeah. 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 And how we can connect energetically from different parts of the UK you yeah. know, and globally. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I think it's just awesome what you do and also how you stepped into it and how you are voicing this ancient, ancient truth coming through you is it's amazing i can kind of see us how we've been there in covens together ages ago <laughs> like and now we're coming together again go oh you look like this this time <laughs> but it's like that soul recognition yeah we're here together yeah. yeah yeah i feel like you feel like my divine mother like my you know <laughs> that's the energy like my my fairy godmother you know <laughs> so sweet that's so sweet Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, it's a it's a real soul recognition there. And I think it's mm. it's lovely that we are doing this together. So thank you so much for being here with us today. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Cece. For more information about Amor and her work, please visit amorstassin.com. Thank you so much for listening. Bye bye everyone. Bye-bye.